Well, happy Monday, Scouters Mountain students and families and community members who are tuning in this Monday morning. Welcome to a brand new week at Scouters Mountain Elementary. It is Monday, February 8th. Did you survive the Super Bowl yesterday if you're a football fan? Hopefully the team you were rooting for won that game yesterday. I know I was at a big party. I'm sure some of you are at big parties, maybe just at your house so we could be socially distant. But enjoyed the Super Bowl. It is the day after the Super Bowl. It is Monday, February 8th. And Mr. Long, what in the world is happening at Scouters Mountain this week? Well, let's let you know what you need to know for today. Well, we do know that February, doesn't matter what day it is, is Black History Month. So every day, we're focusing on a different historical figure. Each day, today, you'll have a new one. I can't wait to see what you came up with for our last one. I'll show you a picture. You tell me by doing a little research why that person is important in not only American history, but a lot of times world history as well. So that continues today. Report cards later this week, you get your second report card. That's coming out later this week. In fact, parents can log on probably, I think it's on Friday, can log on to Parent View and see your report card electronically. We don't send them home on paper, at least not now. You're going to get them electronically. That's later this week. Remember, Wednesday is a no school day. So no morning meetings, no nothing on Wednesday. So teachers can have all day long to work on your report card. So Wednesday is a no school day. We'll still have the morning messages. I'll put those up. Wednesday morning, but no school that day. You don't have to log in for anything. And there is rumor there may be snow later on in the week. We'll have to keep a close eye on that. I wonder if we have snow, do we still have school? Now, if we were in school in person, we probably wouldn't if there was a lot of snow on the ground. But I don't know about distance learning, and that's not Mr. Long's decision. That is made by the boss of all the schools, not me. I don't get to decide whether we have school or not on a snow day. So we'll have to keep watch on that as the week goes on. Remember, tomorrow morning is another morning movement day. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, log into Mr. Long's Google Classroom at 840. That's where you see Mr. Harrison and me leading your morning exercises, your morning stretches. We've had about 50 kids. I know we can have more than that. 50 kids log into my Google Classroom at 840 in the morning. So don't forget about those. We'd love to see you Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. I uh, keep reminding you, log into music and PE for sure, because you're graded on those. Mr. Harrison, Mrs. Carter need to keep track of who's been into their music and PE Google Classrooms. Also, I'd encourage you to log into Mrs. Bell's Google Classroom. She's got a lot of great activities in there for her counseling program, all kinds of things you can be doing. And then don't forget about the health and wellness website. No Miss Whiteley this year, so all your health and wellness lessons or on a website that Mr. Long has sent home a few times. But if you're having trouble finding that website, let me know. You know how to get a hold of me. You can always email Mr. Long. You can always call as well. But the quickest way is probably through email. There it is right there, long c at nclac.k12.or.us. Love getting emails from you, whether it's slides that some of you are getting really good at making, photos, videos. We've got some more videos sent in. And some of you just send me a good old fashioned message on email. I love receiving those as well. You can always get a hold of me that way. So remember that email address. It is Monday, which means we need to do our weekly Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'd like to follow along with me, that would be fantastic. If not, and maybe you've already done this in class, you can fast forward ahead in the video. But let me reset my camera here. I need to do this the best I can because I can't see you. I see the flag on my screen. So put your hand over your heart. Get ready and ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thanks for following along with me on this Monday. We always do the Pledge of Allegiance on Monday. Hopefully I'm still centered on camera as we move ahead. Who is celebrating a birthday this week? Well, let's take a look who is celebrating a birthday this week. We have more than we had last week. Jonah Van Bremen is today from fifth grade. Happy birthday, Jonah. Hopefully he's having a wonderful birthday on a Monday. Tomorrow, another fifth grader, Henry Woodworth's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Tuesday to Henry. Then on Wednesday, kindergartner Fitz Kramer celebrates his birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Fitz. Thursday, Stephen Tran from third grade. Wow, we've had a birthday every single day this week. And we top it off on Friday with Vivian's birthday on Friday.
I think she's in second grade. Hard to believe she's a second grader now, but that's not all. We have others, I believe, on Friday. Yes, Hank Thomas is on Friday from third grade, new to our school this year. We're glad Hank is a part of our room. And then we included Mondays because next Monday is President's Day. No school that day. So Abby's birthday is on Monday and Arna's birthday is on Monday. So happy birthday to both of them as well. Next Monday. So next Monday, probably no morning messages because there's no school at all on that day. No teachers will be here. No, no nothing. So we will have morning messages on Wednesday because I'll still be here while teachers are working on the report cards, but probably not next Monday. So that's why we have Abby and Arna who get the lucky break of having no school on their birthday. All right. Our daily challenge, which is a new one every week, every day of the week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but they're all around the same theme, and that is celebrating Black History Month, which continues throughout all of February. I know lots of you are doing things in your own classroom about this as well. Now, each Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to show you a picture of a famous Black history, a famous person in Black history, could be American history or world history as well. I want to show you a picture. You tell me why that person is important, why that person is well known, and what impact they made on the world. Here's your one for today. Now, this actually went up on Friday. Who is that person and what makes that person so important, not only in black history, but in American history and in sports history in our country as well? Who is that person and why is he important? Now, we, re we learned that that person right there, as I told you, was Jackie Robinson. Now, what do you know about Jackie Robinson or what did you look up about Jackie Robinson so you could learn something about him? Why is he so important, not only in black history, but in American history and uh, sports history as well? So here's what we got. Here's Kate Jansen, who did a super job with this. She made this slide. It says, Jackie Robinson was the first African-American to break the color line in baseball when he played first base for the Brooklyn Dodgers on April 15th, 1947. He was also inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. He won the Rookie of the Year Award in 1947 and an All-Star for six times from 1949 to 1954. One thing he won was the National League Most Valuable Player Award in 1949. Most importantly, he was the first African-American to win this. In 1997, his number, number 42, was, re was retired across all teams. That means nobody on any team in professional baseball is allowed to wear number 42. That was Jackie's number, and he's the only one to wear it now. April 15, 2004 was the first Jackie Robinson day. That's where everyone on the team, no matter what team you're on or what your regular number is, everyone on the team wears number 42 in honor of Jackie Robinson. In 1972, he was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and Presidential Medal of Freedom. So Kate looked up lots of facts. Kate in fifth grade in Mrs. Grimm and Mr. Cook's classroom. Super job, Kate. All these facts of what makes Jackie Robinson so important. The first one on her list is probably the most important. He was the first African-American to break the color line in baseball. Now, what's that mean in professional baseball? What's it mean to break the color line? That means that before Jackie played, there were no black people allowed to play professional baseball. They were not allowed. There was only white people were allowed to play professional baseball. But a general manager named Branch Rickey of the Brooklyn Dodgers said, you know what? I would like Jackie Robinson on our team. I think he's a great player. And Branch Rickey told Jackie that no matter what happened to him, he couldn't fight back. And pitchers would throw balls at his head. Play, other players would spit at him. They would not want to take the field with him. Fans would throw things at him and boo him at all times. And Jackie Robinson did not fight back. He continued to play and he was eventually accepted as a teammate and one of the best players in baseball history. Great job, Kate Jansen, on that one. But she's not the only one to send something in. Here's one from Suri in fifth grade, also in Mrs. Grimm and Mr. Cook's classroom. It says, Jackie Robinson was the first African-American to be able to play in a non-segregated Major League Baseball game in 1947. And then Suri has an interesting fact. She said he's really the second because Fleet Walker – was the first in the American Association. Yeah, there was a different league back then that allowed African-Americans to play. But Major League Baseball, the league that we see today on television that maybe some of you have been to games, Jackie Robinson was the first African-American ever to play in that league. He changed the way of perspective in baseball for all blacks. He was a Brooklyn Dodgers player and he made it into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. There's Jackie Robinson right there. This one comes from 
I believe that is from Nikhil. What was Jackie Robinson known for? Jackie Robinson was the first African-American to play Major League Baseball in the United States. When it came to civil rights, he encouraged nonviolence. Yep, he also encouraged other black people to play in the major leagues and was a mentor to many of them. Also on our screen, let's see. Oh, that's it for now. So we had those people self put those in. So what is our next one going to be? Okay, celebrating Black History Month. Here's our next photo. Who is that person? And what makes that per person so important in Black history and American history and world history? Hmm. Do you recognize that photo? I'm not sure all of you do. If you don't, I'm going to give you a little hint right here. Who is this person and why is she important as we continue to celebrate Black History Month throughout February at Scouters Mountain Elementary. Here we go. That person there, very famous, very important when it came to slaves and ending slavery. That person, of course, is Harriet Tubman, is a name that you've probably heard before. There are many schools named after Harriet Tubman, also parks and famous landmarks. Who is Harriet Tubman? Why is she important? That's where you send me that information. Long see at nclac.k12.or. Dot us. Now you can see that a lot of your fellow Scatters Mountain Coyotes are making slides. That's a great way to do that. You can make a video. You can make just send in a photo. You can send in just your answer to me via email. What makes Harriet Tubman so important in Black history and American history? What did she do and why is she, she someone we should be celebrating, not only during Black History Month, but every month and all the time, someone very, very important in our history. What makes Harriet Tubman so important? There's where you send your answers, slides, videos, photos. Can't wait to see what you come up with by Wednesday. Long see at nclac.k12.or.us. All right, let's get to our weekly contest. We put up a different picture Every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where in Happy Valley did Mr. Long take this photo or where did Mr. Long kind of swipe this photo off the internet? Some of you are discovering that. Here was your last one that went up on Friday. I thought maybe some of you would recognize this. This is another school that a lot of people get our school confused with because the names sound very similar. Anyone know what school that is? It's not too far from here. In fact, Mr. Long was the principal of that school before he came to Scouters Mountain. So it's kind of confusing because the names are very similar. Did anyone figure out where that is or what that is, that picture? Where were you? This is Suri who says, there's the picture again. Suri says, you were at Spring Mountain Elementary. By the way, I love the exterior design there. Yeah, it is a cool looking school, Suri, for sure. And she is right. It was Spring Mountain Elementary. Maybe some of you have had events there before, whether it's sporting events or a concert, or maybe you have friends that go to that school. There's the picture again from Suri. It is kind of a cool looking building. This part down here to your left, that's the cafeteria. And the big part down there, that's the office area. It is pretty cool looking. So let's see what else we have. This is Kate Jansen who says, where was that? She says, Spring Mountain Elementary. It was Spring Mountain, where some of you have probably been for different events before. And then it's a spinner, so it must be Nikhil who says that was Spring Mountain Elementary. Nice job, those of you who figured that out. We get confused. A lot of times people get confused between Spring Mountain and Scouters Mountain. And then there's also a Mount Scott. So lots of mountains in our area for elementary schools. Who solved that mystery? Well, Alice sent me in the answer. She sent an email to me, said, I know where you were, Mr. Long. You were at Spring Mountain Elementary. We saw Kate's slide, we saw Cerise, and we saw Nikhil's. Nice job by three fifth graders and then our lone third grader, Alice. Nice job on that one. So where is the picture this time? All right, you have to be a pizza eater to know this. And I'm not sure if everyone's been to this place before. I thought this would be a fun one. If you see the logo on there, you might give it away. It might give it away if you see where that is. So I see a Pepsi refrigerator, but I do see a logo down at the bottom. Okay, if you're a pizza eater, you might know where this is. Maybe you've seen a commercial. Where is that photo taken? This is in Happy Valley. This is right inside the front door. Notice there's no one else around. We're socially distancing. Lots of soda to drink over to the side. What? restaurant is that? Where did Mr. Long take that photo or get that photo off of the internet? Maybe some of you will send me a picture of you eating pizza while you answer that question or a video. Sometimes some of you send pictures right outside the restaurant. We had one outside of City Hall at one time and some of you sent pictures right outside City Hall. Where is that mystery photo, Smarty Pants? Can you figure that one out? Can't wait to see what you come up with 
as we email those to longc at inclac.k12.or.us. You can send a slide. You can send a photo. You can just send the answer to me. I can't wait to see what you come up with before Wednesday as we roll along. All right, but before we move on, we always have some catch-up videos or photos that people send to me. Maybe they didn't have time to answer during the morning messages the day before, and they send me some pictures. And I've also asked people, when you get your Mountain Dew Award, if those of you that earned a Mountain Dew Award, when you get that at home, send me a photo of that so you we can put that on the morning messages. And we got these that came in. This is Lucas who sent this in. Lucas sends us in from third grade, and we had a question about Rosa Parks. She was someone we were studying as part of Black History Month. And Lucas drew a picture and wrote at the bottom, Rosa Parks is important because of the civil rights movement. She would not give up her seat on the bus because she wanted to end segregation. That's right. Rosa Parks said, I'm not moving to the back of the bus because a white person wants my seat. And they actually organized, she and Martin Luther King Jr. organized a bus boycott. So the bus companies couldn't make any money. And eventually blacks were allowed to sit wherever they wanted to on the bus. So nice job by Lucas getting that turned in. There's another Lucas, that's Lucas Wynn. He has his award right there for Miss Ireland. Great to see that. Now, unfortunately, Lucas, I cannot read that one on the screen. That's too little on your certificate, but very, very impressed with you. Looking sharp, too, in the cardigan sweater. I love look, looking good, Lucas. So we appreciate you sending in that picture. Congratulations on the Scouters Mountain Dew Award. How about this one? There's Dylan Caswell from fifth grade. He's got a big smile on his face with his award. It says, Dylan is showing exceptional growth in his responsibility with schoolwork. He currently has all of his assignments completed for the second quarter. Dylan is a fun classmate who, re who respectfully participates in class discussions and is a great kid to have in class. He's a great kid to have in our school, as a matter of fact. Great job, Dylan. We're very proud of you. Congratulations on the Scouters Mountain Dew Award. There's Genevieve, who took advantage of her free ticket for an ice cream cone that came with your Scouters Mountain Dew Award if you came and picked it up during supply pickups. Genevieve, I believe, earned that for Mr. Harrison for completing all PE assignments. And look at that. She took her cone in a bowl, so no cone, put, took it in a bowl and put gummy worms on top of it. Yummy. Huh? Those are one of my favorite toppings as well. Congratulations, Genevieve. Very well deserved. Then some of you have sent in some videos from home about things that you're doing. Now, not too long ago, Addie Ledford sent in a video of her on rollerblades, rollerblading throughout the school. Juniper has done that before. Some of you have sent some pictures of you or some videos of you rollerblading around your house or out in the neighborhood, skateboards, bicycling. Check out what Ava Davis is doing. This is obviously her garage. Let's turn up the volume, but Ava thought she would send in a video of what she's doing after she is finished with her distance learning for the day. Now, Ava, you be careful on this video. I'm glad you have your helmet on. You need to be extra careful. Let's see what we got. Hi, Mr. Ross. Hello there, Ava. Whoa, you almost fell over right away. Be careful. Looks like a treadmill. Grab onto that. And there she goes. Off screen. Where'd she go? I hope I don't hear any crashing noises. Ava, where'd you go? You didn't tumble down, did you? There you are. These are my favorite shoes. Your favorite actually, shoes. they're not really shoes. They're actually rollerblades. They are rollerblades. Rollerblades. Roller, roller All right. Good job, Ava. I love getting those videos. If you have a video that you would like to send to me, you know where to get a hold of me now. Long C at inclac.k12.or.us. If you have something goofy you're doing around the house, I'd love to see it. We'll put it on the morning messages. Time to wrap up today's show as we always do with our joke of the day. And today's joke comes from Kai Walter of first grade. Now, Kai did something interesting. He made a slide of his joke. So let's take a look at it right here. Watch this. He made this. It says, what room in your house is safe from zombies? Hmm. What room in your house is safe from zombies? I don't think any room would be safe from zombies, Kai. Let's see. I'm kind of confused. What room would be safe from zombies? Well, luckily, Kai made a slide with the answer, and he says, dun -da -da -da, the living room. Oh, I get it, because zombies aren't alive, so the room that would be safe would be the living room. Got it, Kai. Nicely done. He says the living room would be safe from zombies. If you have a joke of the day, make sure you email it or send a video or send a slide of you telling the joke to Mr. Long so we'll get it up here on the morning messages, especially for Wednesday. We could use another one. Great job, Kai. There's where you send them. You know that by now. There's the email address right there to give me all of your information. Want to know about Harriet Tubman as well? Where is that mystery photo? 
And do you have a joke of the day that we can put up there? Great job, everyone. That was super loud today. Hope you're having a great day so far on this Monday. A full week here, but no school on Wednesday and no school next Monday as well. It is Monday, February 8th. Snow in the forecast for later on this week. We'll see if that actually happens. But today, I think it's about 40 degrees or so. You can get outside, enjoy some fresh air after you're done with your distance learning. Have a super day today. We'll see you back here for the morning messages on Wednesday. But remember, no school that day, but we'll still have morning messages. Want to see what you come up with for Black History Month for your mystery photo and any other strange photos that you may have or videos or jokes. Can't wait to put them all on the morning messages on Wednesday.